Now, you know, when I, when I entered seminary all those years ago, I never thought I'd be spending the first six months of 2022 here in Halifax. And how hard it is to think now that those six months are coming to their end. This is my final weekend here and my final homily. Father Simon has been calling it my swan song. I'm calling it my farewell discourse. So there's no, there's no holding back now. <laughs> You'll also notice that I deliberately chose this weekend so that I could be wearing green when I'm leaving. <laughs> it, it's only fitting, right? The hour has come for me to depart from this side of the world and return to the green hills from which I came. And if you haven't heard, I'm going to be ordained a priest on September 18th, back in, back in my home parish in Cork. So. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, you're very kind. I'd just like if you could uh, keep me in your prayers in the build up to that on, on that day, and of course I'll be continuing to pray for you all. Uh, I do promise I'll come back, please God, maybe in next year, 12 months time or so, to celebrate a mass of thanksgiving for all the, all the benefit, all the, all the blessings, all the graces that I've received in my, in my time here. Now, saying goodbye to St. Benedict Parish has made me, you know, kind of reflect on the overall experience and the time before I, the, the time before I came here. And I think I mentioned this before that it wasn't exactly my idea to come to Nova Scotia in January <laughs> and do an internship at St. Benedict Parish. Now, I had heard of Divine Renovation and Father James Mallon, and somewhere or other I'd come across this guy called Father Simon Lobo, pastor, international speaker, author of almost 1.25 books but I still didn't fully realize the significance of the place. And you know, when I arrived, there was still COVID restrictions, we couldn't sing, numbers were limited, etc. So it was kind of hard to see, like, what's, what's the big deal all about? But slowly, I started to meet people, more and more people every week, whose lives had been changed because they had met Jesus through or at St. Benedict Parish. And I could see just how far a reach this parish has. And I'm going to tell you a funny story about how that penny dropped for me. So it's back in March, and I get this invite from a priest in Anaganish, Father Danny McLennan, who uh, had spent some time in Ireland. He said, come on down. So I took a few days off, and when you do, when you're on holidays and in the company of a priest, you spend your time visiting his parishioners and going to funerals. So I went to a funeral in this place called Roman Valley in Guysborough, eastern, eastern part of Nova Scotia. And I was on holidays, so I wasn't wearing my collar, and COVID restrictions were still in place, so I still had my mask on. And after this funeral, this lady in her 80s comes up to me and says, I know you from TV. Now, hard to believe, but I am often confused with a younger Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> so so I, just, I just laugh it off and tell her, well, I'm sorry, but you, you must be mistaken. No, she insists. You're at St. Benedict Parish. I watch you every week. <laughs> well, I think no flies on her. <laughs> so we just laugh about it. We continued on our journey. Ten minutes later, we pull into the side of the road to this country store, random location, nothing else around it. We go in, we get a sandwich and a coffee. And we're at the till, and this family comes in, father, mother, three children, and a grandmother. Cold weather today, the man says. It is indeed. I think there'll be rain later on, you know, making light conversation here. You're not from Canada, are you? <laughs> now, this is the classic question. I've had, he spotted my accent, he knows I'm not Canadian. I've had this conversation hundreds of times. No, indeed, I say, I'm from a land far away. That's right, the man says. You're from Ireland. You're Deacon Sheehan. 
you're at St. Benedict Parish. <laughs> we watch you every week. <laughs> well, glory be to God, I think to myself. <laughs> I'm only in Canada a couple of months, and I'm being recognized in quick succession in this rural part of the Nova Scotian countryside. And these people recognize me because of St. Benedict Parish. And it's suddenly dawning on me that I am part of something much bigger than I ever, than I had previously imagined. Well, it turns out that family was actually visiting from British Columbia. They're on holidays. So it was just complete coincidence. We were in the same store at the same time. They watch mass here every week as well as being part of their own parish. So if you're listening from Guysborough or, um, or British Columbia, I'd like to send out my greetings to you. <laughs> now, I say all these things, not for my own benefit, but by way of just a couple of anecdotes that demonstrate the, the reach and the influence of this parish. Each and every one of you is part of something that reaches out and is a source of inspiration and hope for so many parishes and people around the world. And at this point, part of me is thinking now, I could have missed all of this. I could have missed all of this. Because years ago, when I set out on this journey, on this, when I decided to follow Jesus in this way, looking back now, I probably did want to attach a few conditions to this, this discipleship. So like, I'm happy to follow Jesus, but when he was saying, follow me to Canada, I was thinking, hold on, like, wouldn't we be better off staying in Cork, Lord? <laughs> After all, you know, that's where my family is. I don't want to miss out on anything, FOMO. And besides, I don't know a single soul over there. So I was like, it's like I was saying, yes, Lord, I will follow you, but on my terms and conditions. You see, oftentimes, I think, when we set out on this walk with Jesus that we call discipleship, we do so on our terms, There's, with strings attached almost. We give our yes to Jesus, but it's a conditional yes. It's a yes, so long as it's not too much you're asking of me. So, for example, we might make a promise to have a daily prayer time in our, in our, in our lives. We only ever do it when we feel like it. Or we commit ourselves to coming to Mass, but we only do it when the, when the weather is nice. Or here's an area of, of our lives, of my life, that Jesus is asking me or inviting me to change, like a, a habitual sin or something. But we end up saying, I'll attend, I'll attend to that later. Or we keep receiving this invitation from Jesus to embark on something new, a new adventure or a change, be it in a, a relationship or a job or whatever. We hold back because the thought of the unknown fills us with so much fear. So we give our yes to God, but we attach these conditions. We hold back just a little because of this sense of fear or distraction or a sense of unworthiness. Or we think that by letting Jesus fully into our lives, we lose something of ourselves. Now, if this is you, I am right there with you. And so are the people we meet, that Jesus meets in today's gospel. We come across these three unnamed individuals who each express this desire to follow Jesus, but with conditions. Now we could look at them and say, they all seem pretty reasonable, right? I mean, their hesitations come from a desire to care for one's parents to bury the dead, to say farewell to family and friends. It's hard to argue with those. Like, but I kind of think of them as representatives of the difficulties that we can have when embarking on this faith life. Because the first guy, he commits without really knowing what he's signing up to. The second is invited by Jesus, but he can't seem to prioritize him in his life. And the third declares, I will follow you. But he clings to his former life. It's like he's saying, I want to follow you, but just not yet. Each of them gives a yes to Jesus, but with conditions. Yet Jesus is the one inviting them, and therefore us, 
to surrender to him with our total selves, with every fiber of our being. When we put our hand to the plow, we must do so with this, this singular focus on Jesus. We can't be part-time disciples or half-hearted proclaimers of the kingdom. Now, time and time again, in my own life, but also listening to so many people's stories, I've seen that the more we surrender ourselves, the more we give ourselves to Jesus, the more abundant are the blessings which are showered upon us. And now to every single one of us, Jesus says, follow me. And he invites this response from us, a free response, I will follow you. That following him, that walk with Jesus in our lives, is a lifelong journey that needs a daily yes. But above all, it's a journey that he leads. And so to follow him involves this, this personal risk. It's almost like we have to overcome something in ourselves first. And now each of us, I'm conscious, each of us has said yes in some way or other. Like our, our yes to come to church or our yes to read, our, read the Bible at home. Or maybe you've said yes to, to serve or to give or to grow in a particular virtue, for example. These are great expressions of our discipleship. But there's always this danger that we've attached these, these conditions, even without knowing it, even without being aware of it. But all of this time, Jesus is continually saying, trust me, walk with me, surrender yourself to me, and I will lead you to the Father. And if we choose this, this walk with Jesus, even if we are a little bit hesitant to start, the fruit of this surrender is blessing, it's life, and life to the full. I know myself, if I had held on tightly to those conditions originally, on my yes to follow Jesus, and resisted this journey to St. Benedict Parish, and stayed where I was much more comfortable, back home in Cork, then I wouldn't have had the wealth of experiences I've been blessed with in this internship. I'd never have met all of you wonderful, prayerful, faith-filled people. I'd never have got to work with an, an incredible team here in the parish. I'd never have experienced so many people starting off on their walk with Jesus through Alpha. I'd never have seen the chance to experience what it means to be a leader who raises up other leaders. I'd never have had the opportunity to sit at the feet of Father Simon and Father Alex homilists extraordinaire. <laughs> They've literally written the book on it, coming to all good bookstores near you very soon. I'd never have made the cover of Benedictus magazine. <laughs> and I'd never have had the opportunity to make so many new friends. See, to follow Jesus with all your heart means that you will end up having all these experiences that you never dreamt of meeting people you never thought you'd meet, going places you never thought you'd go, seeing things you'd never expected to see, and being richly blessed by the marvels God has in store for you and your life. Now this leg of my journey is concluding, and Jesus is saying, go and proclaim the kingdom of God in another location. But the mission of this parish continues. I mightn't be here next weekend, but your faithful priests will. And I know the work must go on. There are more disciples for Jesus to be made. There are more lives to be transformed. And the thing about a parish is that no one person is irreplaceable. In fact, our seminarian Aaron has already been eyeing my office downstairs. <laughs> no one is irreplaceable except Jesus Christ because he is the center of our lives and the center of St. Benedict Parish. I mentioned at the beginning how I've been reflecting, looking back with gratitude. Now I return to Ireland and look ahead. And Jesus is inviting me again to give this, this total yes to him and follow him as a priest. And part of me is, is daunted and afraid of this prospect of giving this, this unreserved yes without conditions. I don't know exactly what to expect, but I know that daring to follow him 
with an undivided heart, as best I can, leads to many, many blessings. And I know if I can take even a small portion of the gifts from St. Benedict Parish with me, then I know God will do the rest. Because ultimately, we know that people are searching for God. They're thirsty for his word of hope that says, I go before you. Come, follow me.